Hi everyone. Hello. Oh my gosh. So good to see everyone chatting in the comments already. We have had quite a week um, getting up to Fairbanks, Alaska, where we are right now. We're in my sister's basement, which is a great place to be, um, with her cat. The cat's name is Baby Cat. I don't know why there's not a better name proper, name, proper name for the cat in a family of people who, who make up really good names for things. Right. Um, but anyways, the cat's name is Baby Cat. Um, he has been uh, refusing to get off of the piano keyboard and he can be a little feisty. So, oh, maybe he's going to remove himself. He's been playing what sounds like modern jazz, which has yeah. been very calming, actually. It's yeah. quite nice. Um, so we are up here in Fairbanks, Alaska, and um, we uh, were frantically setting up the session area. I think everything's going okay, but we're not fully set up yet. We did uh, create a little selection of Alaska items, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Um, but before that, I'll just go over the usual basic things in case we have some new visitors. We're featuring some Alaska players tonight. Um, so maybe there's some folks from Anchorage or Fairbanks who are watching. Mm -hmm. That'd be really cool. Yeah. They'd be in the same time zone. You know, it's not right. night here. It's, it's 4 only 4 in the afternoon. Yeah, we're going to go out and do like other things after this. This is crazy. Perhaps. Um, anyways, if you go down in the description of this video, you can see uh, all sorts of information. The description is going to get um, more important um, in these next two weeks because we have decided, some of you know this, but we have decided to put the session on hiatus after the 40th session. Um, there's a number of reasons for this, but the main one is uh, kind of a, a burnout issue from, for Chris and I. We've been doing this um, twice a week uh, starting in March. And we've only missed two, I believe, yeah, right? Yeah. One being this past Monday. Right. Um, so we just need a little bit of a break and we're up in Alaska, so we're gonna kind of enjoy the summer here. Tune Supply is not stopping. I just wanna make sure that everybody knows that. I think there was some confusion. We still have a bunch of projects that are coming uh, down the pipe for Tune Supply. And we're probably going to keep doing some sessions. We're just not gonna do them on the um, twice a week. Um, oh, hi. On the twice a week schedule. Uh, so it's very important um, if you want to keep doing some of this stuff to get on the mailing list because um, that's how we're going to uh, make sure you know about the events that are coming up next. Yeah. So there's the Tune Supply mailing list and the Mario's mailing list. The, the links are down in the description and I would get on both of those uh, if you can. We also have a Facebook page where we put all the updates. You can um, subscribe on YouTube, be our friend on Facebook. We have an Instagram. All of that good stuff will help us keep you informed as uh, time goes on. Uh, this is com completely uh, community supported up to the very end. So please, uh, if you're able, keep contributing through the end so we can pay these last few artists that we have. We are putting together an all-star all lineup for the last couple sessions. And of course, tonight we have an all-star lineup as yeah. well. So um, you can contribute at the link, which is above Chris's head. Yep. And uh, it's down in the description and I will put it in the um, comments as well once we get started. And uh, just, to, uh, just to start the Alaska fun off here, Baby Cat's hair is just like floating around in the air. Yes. It's amazing. It's gonna set off my allergies yeah, too soon. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm surprised it hasn't already actually. <laughs> Maybe Baby Cat is hyperallergenic. Yeah, that'd be great. It's possible. That would be great. Um, I'm just going to show you a few pictures that we took on the way up to Alaska. None of them are that exciting. We haven't gotten a chance to actually go out and do like serious Alaska exploring yet because we were kind of quarantining in, quarantining in a hotel for a few days and we just got up to my sister's house today. But we will have some exciting adventures for you in the next two weeks. For now, just a few pictures of the journey up here. And I forgot what I put on here. So let's go see what we've got. Oh yes, this was in the Seattle airport and it says school your friends practice uh, physical distancing. Now, I, we had to put this on because th those are two giant salmons. Like if you caught one of those salmon, you would be really excited yeah. to catch a three foot salmon. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, so so this like hopeful salmon fishing, I guess. This is avocado uh, in avocado seat on the airplane, um, masked appropriately, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so avocado is with us. This is actually a picture, a bad picture of Eielson Air Force Base flying over 
on the way into the Fairbanks airport. And I took it because um, I got my scuba certification in one of those little lakes right there, which was, um, it was on the first day that it snowed. It was literally freezing. We were pouring boring, boiling water down our suits to stay warm. And there was an attack pike in the lake. Oh. No visibility. It would just come up and bite your butt. It was really scary. Anyways, so that picture reminded me of that. We went to Fred Meyers, which is the place to go immediately upon arrival. That's like the store that everybody goes to. And we found giant things already. Everything in Alaska is giant. So look at these onions. They're not even Alaska onions and they're giant. It's amazing. And then one more giant thing we found was giant bags of rice. <laughs> We've been buying really expensive rice in Brooklyn that costs like, uh, you know, not that much less than this for a tiny amount. And here you can buy, what is that, like a 50 pound bag of rice? Yeah, and, and a massive bag of oatmeal there And as oatmeal, well. yeah. yeah. So there's good. some more Alaska for you. And then this is the last one for right now. Um, extra points to anybody who knows what pilot bread is in the right hand jar there. Um, I'm actually maybe not going to tell anybody. I want to see yeah, if anybody knows. Give it away, yeah. yeah, I want to see what anybody knows what pilot bread is or pilot crackers. It's also known as, and you can buy them for 35 cents at yeah. the coffee at the coffee shop here sure. right, in uh, Fairbanks. So, um, okay, so we're going to get started off with some tunes today. If I can get the cat off my lap now, baby cat is um, famously. What's the word for baby cat? Like moody. Ornery. Ornery and moody. Yeah. Does not like to be moved once he is somewhere. So we will see how this goes. I could probably play with him on my lap. Yeah, probably. Um, the three tunes we're going to start off with are some kind of beginner basic ones just to get warmed up. Off She Goes, Road to Liz Navarna, which I just taught in my level yep. two class. They, they know the A part, so you guys play the okay, A part with us. Okay. And the cat's rambles to the child saucepan, because of the cat's here, okay. the cat. And uh, that one I taught on YouTube a few weeks ago. Right. So um, hopefully you can play along here. Baby cat, you got to go. I'm so sorry. Ouch. Oh, my God. Okay, there we go. Whew. That was scary. He's going to come back uh, he's in gonna, the middle of the set. He's going to jump up while you're playing yeah. and play some, play some jazz for us. <laughs> All right, so we'll take these at a nice uh, slow clip. We'll just play them two times each because we're going to go nice and slow to get everybody uh, warmed up here. Um, apologize, apologies for any cats. It'd be great if the cat came up during Cat's Rambles. Oh, yeah. That'd be appropriate. Okay, here we go. Three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 
cat interruptions yet. Yeah. The cat has fallen asleep on the couch right here, actually. That's a good sign yeah. uh, for our music, I yes. suppose. <laughs> um, cool. Okay, so hopefully you can play along there on those, on those ones because we now have um, the big guns mm -hmm. coming in. The guests tonight are all three of the um, Valali brothers. That's Killian, uh, Niall, and Quivin. Um, we had asked Killian if he wanted to do it, and he suggested Niall, and then he said, well, Quivin can come along for yeah. some as well. And of course we were like, that sounds Great. lovely. Yeah. And we're extremely grateful and glad and excited that they could join us because of course these guys are the best of the best. Yeah, they're the real deal. They're the, re the real deal. Yeah. And I think that, uh, who's recording from Ireland? Do you remember? Are they all in Ireland? Uh, I don't know. I can't remember. At least I Queen think is, in, is yeah. yeah. So, um, yes, this will be great. And the theme, of course, you might be able to guess, is siblings. Um, one, because of our guests tonight. And also, um, I'm back home and I have three younger sisters. I am, of course, in one of those sisters' house, Kylan. And uh, I've got a picture of them on the on the piano there. We'll talk about them in a little bit. But being home, of course, reminds us of family. And um, I'm excited to see them, although I only got to see them for like a day from and a distance, like, <laughs> like from through away, the door. Yeah. Um, and they went on a, a little road trip. And Chris actually doesn't have any siblings. Yes, yeah, so I don't really have too much to <laughs> contribute to this theme. But you're not alone. There are other people. There are others. People. Saw, yeah. Yes. Um, Angela Botzer actually told us right. um, that she is an only child as well. Um, there's probably some good sides and some bad sides to not having yeah. siblings, yeah. I, yeah. I could guess. Um, anyway, so we're going to get started with the first set from the brothers, um, and then we'll see what happens after that. All right. There we go. There we go. Hello, how you all doing? Uh, good to be back here with you. Still, still on, on camera and in our bedrooms and living rooms, but um, things are obviously going a lot better here in New York so you never know we might be down in, in Mario's one of these days um, okay I'm here I have my brother Niall here the theme is siblings I have two siblings uh, first of all we have Niall here in the concertina um, we've been touring a lot over the years but not not so much recently so nice to get a few tunes in with them even via the video um, and we'll have my brother Keeving Play, he's going to play later on. So, anyway, myself and Niall get going with a few reels, um, fairly well known tunes. The first one is called The Wise Maid. Um, the second one has a few different names. The, it is a version of Tour the Calico or Rip the Calico, um, sometimes known as Michael Russell's, and Seamus Ennis, the great piper, called it A Fair Wind. So, take, take your pick on the titles. And the last one is Sporting Paddy, which I think a lot of you know. So, okay.
Yes, off to a good start there. Nice. Um, amazing. I was just thinking about the tech magic that's going on right now because we're in Alaska, which yeah. is far away from everything, yeah. except Russia, of course, and Canada. Um, and we've got people watching all over the country and a few across the world. Yeah. And these guys recorded in New York and Ireland. Yeah. It's crazy. I Super wish we cool. didn't have to do this, but it is kind of cool what, what can be done when we need to yeah. do it. Yeah. That is cool. Um, okay, so we usually have some food and drink during the session, as we hope you are as well at home um, as you would if you were sitting in Mary O's. Now, if you are at Mary O's, you would probably have some French fries because that's the that is, usual thing to have yeah. at Mary O's. She makes excellent French fries. But we are not at Mario's. Well, we're at the virtual Mario's. Yep. So tonight at our virtual pub, I have set up a selection of things that I found in just a day or two up here in Alaska. Now, um, when we first started doing the session, we would sometimes feature some, some drinks. In fact, we featured some Alaskan drinks. And somebody said to me, are you guys sponsored by... Uh, any of those companies that you're showing? The answer is no, and no. we don't wish to be. <laughs> I just love supporting local businesses, yeah. for real. That's not even like me being cliche. I just I just love doing that. Now we're back in my homeland where there are all sorts of cool local businesses, and so we were just gonna show you a few things that we picked up already. Well, of course, I have my uh, Sunrise Bagel and Espresso Coffee that I've been nursing all day. And we went to the farmer's market yesterday, which is my favorite thing to do here. It's on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Um, and we picked up, of course, um, carrots, which the carrots in Alaska are just like, they're not like normal carrots. They are like the best carrots you've ever had. Now, the, the orange carrots are not ready yet, but we got some right. yellow carrots. These are wild strawberries, and these are actually the largest wild strawberries I've ever seen Usually they're about that big. Right. This must be a bumper crop. It's very rainy this summer. Um, so these are some wild strawberries. We got like a huge broccoli. Everything gets huge here in Alaska. We have um, snacking turnips. That's what I call them. I don't know what they're really called, but you can just like eat these um, uh, like an apple. I'm gonna eat one during the break. We got some onions over here. It's all good with the farmer's market. These are peonies that are grown here in Alaska. There's huge peony farms here. Uh, for some reason, they grow well in this climate. Mm -hmm. And my sister had obtained a whole bunch um, for us. I don't know exactly why, but there's a whole bunch of Alaska-grown peonies there. And then for drinks, we have... Um, I'm going to get in trouble with Fairbanksons because we don't actually have any of the Fairbanks uh, beers or liquors here. But right. we've got some uh, Denali Brewing uh beer, which I think Chris is probably going to open up right yeah, now. Yeah, that actually sounds good. I think I might have that. And Am I allowed to eat the set? Yeah, okay. absolutely. And we got some beer from Palmer. We have Mama Bear's Kombucha, which is made here in Fairbanks. Um, some gin. I can't remember where the gin is from. Is that Anchorage? Um, let's see. Denali, Denali Spirits, Spirits from Talkeetna. Awesome. And we have some coffee from North Pole, which is a real place, actually. North Pole, Alaska. It is not at the North Pole, strangely, although there's a giant Santa Claus there. And if you write a letter to Santa Claus, it actually gets sent to North Pole, Alaska, and somebody will reply to it, as far right. as I know. Right. I, think that, I think that's still happening. And my mom was the vice principal of North Pole High School for many years, and she just retired, actually. Um, that's all of our, oh, and we have some vodka oh, from yeah. Horfrost oh, this is Fairbanks. Distillery, which is Fairbanks, and it's a very cool, um, uh, place, uh, if you want to check out really a great distillery. Glare, but it's a beautiful bottle. I wish you could see it. And here's the other cool thing that I just found in my sister's kitchen. This is hand sanitizer made by Horfrost Distillery. Oh, good. Because I know a lot of the distilleries around the country have been switching over to hand sanitizer, so you can, you can apparently get that, which is very cool. So that's what we're eating and drinking during the session. Hopefully you have some local products from wherever you are. And um, I have a few more Alaska pictures before we go on to our next set. Again, I forgot what I put here. Oh, there we go. There's some Fairbanks. That is the Hoodoo Brewery, uh, a local favorite. Um, what was this? The Ghost? Yeah. Is that how you say it? I don't know how you say it. G -O -S -E. It's sour style. Yeah. Sour beer. It was really nice. We checked that out. Everybody's <laughs> social distancing and everything. It's all good. We went on a run and we found these strange, um, they look like tiny apples, but they were growing on a rose bush. And I actually, I know my Alaska plants pretty well, but I don't know what that is. So if anybody knows, um, let me know. This was at the liquor store. I didn't show you this picture, no, Chris. No, I was wondering what this is. Yeah, this is some peanut butter whiskey mm. and peanut butter on the shelf at the liquor store. 
You know, I've, that doesn't sound appealing, but I said the same thing about the salmon vodka. Yeah, and that was pretty good. And that was pretty good. So I don't know what that is, but I thought it was amusing. Okay, and then Chris and I, I took Chris to go to Bingo, which is my favorite thing to do in Fairbanks besides the farmer's market. And um, we didn't win anything, but that's a picture of us at Chino Bingo, which was great, great fun. And, oh, this is a great story. So um, my mom said that she saw a raven take something small and white and bury it in her lawn. And so we decided to go see what that was. She said, I think it might be a baby bunny. And I was like, oh my God, that sounds awful. Yeah. But we went to where she saw the raven bury this and we uncovered it. Now don't worry, we covered it back up so that raven can have it later. But guess what it was? Two tiny donuts. The raven knows what it likes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think that's all my pictures. Is that one it? More, oh, yeah. one more. Uh, okay. Oh, this was at the farmer's market. I th I, I've seen a lot of good pandemic signs, but I, I thought this one was pretty hilarious. Please be patient. This is our first pandemic. That's good advice. Yeah. Although yeah. Alaska has a famous story, of course, about um, a pan pandemic and re involving um, the sled dog Balto, who brought the, um, the, the serum up to Nome. Uh, that cured the town. I'm I'm paraphrasing this this story greatly, um, but this is of course not the first pandemic huh. that has happened. Um, okay, so well, those are my pictures for now. I have on my notes introduced the cat, but the cat has already been introduced, yeah. I and thankfully had a, a full feature actually. Thankfully, the cat is over there, so we don't need to introduce the cat. Yeah. Um, so I think that means we should have some more tunes. All right. Okay, here we go. Back to Killian and Nile. Okay few jigs this time, a uh, few piping tunes that hopefully you'll know. Um, the first one is uh, a favourite of our father's, uh, well known piping jig and uh, it is a strange enough title, not sure, quite sure what it means. It's called I Buried My Wife and Danced on Her Grave. Um, not quite sure is the dancing on the grave celebrating the wife's death or honouring the wife who may have been a great dancer or something but uh, we'll leave it up to our own imagination but that's the first tune the second one is Chucky to Awalyalum or Anjuka to Awalyalum I think uh, Will You Come Home With Me not sure where that started and uh, but the last one is called My Darlings Asleep oh, maybe, maybe they're actually all related um, but my darling's asleep well known uh, tune probably in the fiddles as well. But okay.
Ooh, that was me doing both woos. Yeah, I, I, sure. I figured out how uh -huh. to do it. Um, have you heard those people who can sing two tones at the same yeah, time? Yeah, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I wonder if anybody in our session can do that. Probably. Probably Isaac. Yes. Actually. I thought you'd learn how to do that. I, I learned a little bit of tube and throat singing. Yeah. Um, I can, I'm not going to do it if that's where you're going. Oh, okay. I'm not going to do it like on demand. I'll practice it. Maybe I'll do it the next time. That could be fun. But I'm really not very good at it. It is an incredible art form though. Yeah. Um, so I just was thinking about the names of those tunes there. Um, they could tell a story no matter what direction, what yeah. order they were played yes. in. Those three particular <laughs> tunes. I was making up stories for what happened to the woman <laughs> and the man there. But that's a, that's a great set of tunes. Um, okay, so somebody, uh, actually a number of people were talking about their scones. Ah, yes. Because uh, you may remember that we, we announced that Mary's scone, mail order scone business was up and running. Mm -hmm. And uh, you all ordered 21 uh, batches of scones. Yeah. Actually, it was more than that because some people ordered two batches of scones, as I suggested. It was, Good it was 21 independent orders. 21 some orders. Some for multiple batches. Yes. Right? So probably like, right. I think it was like 40 batches of scones. Yeah. Um, Mary, of course, was able to somehow put those all together and send them all out on Monday. And they have been arriving. Some of them arrived as soon as Tuesday. I know that Bob Beamers got his on Tuesday. Yeah. Um, because I think he lives in on the Upper East Side, so it didn't have very far to go. Hopefully, if you ordered your scones, you got them because they were all mailed on Monday. And Mary sent us a picture of the operation. And this isn't even like half of the scones oh, that no. got sent out. Um, she sent her daughter uh, to the post office, yep. three runs to the post yep. office, uh, and and she got them all out, which is pretty cool. So uh, don't forget, if you want scones, this offer is ongoing. There is actually a website where you can purchase them, and uh, the name of the website is right there on the screen. It's a little bit strange. We haven't. It's my fault that I haven't got it hooked up exactly correctly to Mary's website, her it real website. Like a, it looks like a scam, but we promise it's not. It's not a scam. Don't worry. Um, and you can go and order between six scones or what's the most? 24? 24, I think is the most. 24 scones. Yeah. yeah. And they can be shipped to anywhere in the country. Um, they're going via priority <laughs> mail so that they arrive quickly. And in fact, there's already been two orders to Alaska. And I know that some people are eating their scones as we speak at right. the session. I've already seen that in the comments. Yeah, it's great. So go order your scones. She strips them on Mondays. So it, as long as you have for your order. For maximum freshness. For maximum freshness. So have your order in before. Oh, she, the cutoff actually is Saturday for the oh, Monday, for Monday order. orders. Yeah, okay. Saturday. So get those in if you would like them for next week. Um, and let's see. I think we're ready for our guests. That sounds good. So we have some special guests today. They're particularly special because they are in Alaska. And I actually don't know one of them personally, but but uh, Sky Kelsey, I know personally. Um, I have watched him grow up, which sounds strange because I always think of myself <laughs> as growing up in Alaska and other people watching me grow up. But I've watched Sky grow up, and he is an incredible fiddle player and, and plays lots of other instruments as well. All of them, I think. Yeah. There's pretty much no instrument I haven't seen him play. Um, he's a, a amazing skier as well. He's mm -hmm. training for... The Olympics and all the, the cool. um, best ski races. This guy was on the session once before playing about four different instruments. You might remember. Yep. yep. And um, he has been living in various places around the country um, training for ski for ski racing. But right now he's back in Anchorage. And these sets that he put together for us were recorded in Anchorage with his friend Colin Lindsay, who I've not met, but is also an amazing musician. So uh, they've got three sets and we're going to go hear the first ones right now. <laughs> I'm Sky. I'm Colin. And we're up here in Anchorage, Alaska, coming in on a sunny day. Beautiful. Sunny. Beautiful. Windy. Windy. Lots of planes. Yeah. Lots of power outages. Power outages, exploding transformers. Yep. Uh, barking dogs. Barking dogs, lots of those. <laughs> yep. Neighbors introducing themselves. <laughs> hey, George. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do some jigs. Let's do it. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 
side too and yeah. the sound was pretty good yeah um i keep looking over there you might see me because there I, I can see the outside from this window and it's green and there there's a little mouse that sometimes runs up next to the window and there's birds oh man it's great and i forgot to say i went over to my mom's today to pick up our lights for the for the session session lights as you do you know right. everybody needs session everybody lights. Them. Right. and um she came to the door and she was like hey oh hey do you want some raspberry jam and i was like yeah i want some raspberry jam so she gave me this homemade raspberry jam made from raspberries growing 20 feet from her door this is one of the things that i like about alaska mm -hmm. of course it's not only alaska where this happens but um it does seem that when you visit an alaskan you're always given some sort of something that they they grew or they caught or they made whatever it is yep. and i just love that i try yep. to do that in new york but sometimes people think that i'm weird like when i try to give people raw fish yeah they're like what are you doing 
What and do I'm I do like, with this? This is like gold. What do you? <laughs> why are you confused about this? Yeah. Anyways, thank you, mom, for the jam. She had to brave um, hornets to get that. Yes, she had to brave hornets. That's true. She told us yeah. that she got stung like thirty times by hornets while 30, she was yeah. p getting the raspberries. Yeah. And she said it like it was nothing. Like, oh, that's just how right. you get the raspberries. Yeah. Yeah. Alaskans are tough. That is. Yeah. That is true. Um, okay. So uh, I like actually. This is a nice little like yeah, leaning good, spot. Right? It's nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, thank you, by the way, to Josh Bennett, who has set us up with a keyboard here yeah. in Alaska. We didn't, uh, we, we didn't put the, our keyboard on Alaska Airlines to come Clearly up. Not. But um, he's provided us a really nice, beautiful um, instrument here. So yes. thanks, Josh. Thank you, Josh. Um, okay, siblings is the topic for today. And I picked out just a few uh, pictures of my siblings. I have, as I mentioned, three younger sisters. And uh, let's see, I can't remember what I put up here. We'll go, we'll go see what we've got. Oh, this is, okay, this is some siblings and some cousins at my grandma's house. And I just, this picture is really evocative of Alaska and mm -hmm. Alaskan childhood. This is in Toke, Alaska, which is really Alaskan, uh, out by the Canadian border. And those are, um, let's see, those are three, three cousins plus my sister Rachel there in the front and Toby the cat in the back. Excellent. And this is my sisters and I in outfits that my mom made. We grew up mostly wearing clothes that my mom made, which we all absolutely loved. That was one of my favorite jumpers there. It had vegetables on it. Great. That's why I loved it. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. And uh, getting a little older here, this is uh, three, uh, sorry, two of my sisters in the front, a couple more cousins in the back, and my grandma, Willie Lou Warblow, mm -hmm. uh, a true Alaskan pioneer. Um, here we are in our, uh, let's see, late teens, early 20s. You can tell from how we're dressed there. Uh, <laughs> um, this was from one of the annual Christmas photo shoots. Mm -hmm. um, Taya's face really says it all there, right. I think. Yeah. Um, yep, those are my beautiful sisters. And our most recent picture, this is from Taya's wedding. She's there in the middle in the wedding dress, of course. And all of us, along with some, some new siblings, Kylie's uh, kids there in the front. Um, and they are, at, we are, we are at their house now, um, which is very nice of them to yep. let us be here. Um, so we have some sibling pictures of yours that are coming up a little bit later, um, but those are my siblings. Chris has no siblings, so you can just look at him. Yep. This is the total is of Chris and his siblings right here playing piano today. This is my contribution to the <laughs> pictures. You are the contribution yes. uh, today. <laughs> yes, excellent. Um, okay, cool. So let's uh, maybe have some more tunes yeah. from the brothers right, on that go. note. All right, we're going to do uh, a couple of hornpipes this time, do something a bit a bit different, change of pace, and uh, we'll do two hornpipes. The first one is called The Humours of Tully Crine, a um, fairly well-known tune, uh, been recorded by, by plenty of people, including Kevin Burke. Um, so me and Al have been playing that for many, many years now, so... Uh, we'll do that and then the second one is common enough tune too it's called Mrs. Galvin or Mrs. Galvin's Fling or Miss Galvin's Fling I can't remember exactly but uh, Frankie Gavin recorded this anyway and uh, a lot of pipers play it they call it Gary Nasilog uh, Willie Clancy recorded it but uh, we'll try them and see how you get on
Lovely. I don't know either of those tunes, no. strangely. Yeah. Um, and somebody was commenting on or asking what humors means in the Irish tune context. Do you know? No. I don't Do either. you know? No. I always think of bodily humors, which is not a pleasant thing. I it bet, must not be that. I bet Isaac knows. Uh, Isaac is here. Yeah. So Isaac, let us know what your thoughts are. Um, Isaac confirmed that he does not do... Uh, tube and throat singing, ah. but he knows somebody who does. Of course. And um, I, what Isaac does do, I, I don't, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say it, but I'm going to say it. He <laughs> sometimes sings and plays the flute at the same time. Have you oh, heard this? No, that sounds cool. It is really incredible. Yeah. He doesn't do it very often. Yeah. Um, but if you ever get a chance to hear him do that, it's, cool. it's pretty spectacular. Um, okay, we're going to have the halftime now, but there were two things I just wanted to comment on from the comments. And one was somebody asked if avocado is here. Yes. Avocado is sitting right up here with uh, his or her mask made by, by Ruby Hoy. And on the left, that's my grandmother's accordion. And Chris tried playing it and it is a weird, what is it? Can well, you... it's a CF. Huh. Um, but there was weird notes or something. Well, I've never played a CF, so I don't know if it's weird or if that's how it always is. But it doesn't lay out exactly the way that mine, yeah. like an ordinary diatonic or a, a half step box would. I don't know much about it, yeah. but um, my grandmother played it um, uh, very nearly up until uh, when she passed away last year at the age of 103, mm. which is amazing. And now Kylie has it. Um, yeah, pretty cool. And then uh, Christine asked if you can pick up scones if you are in the East Village. And the answer is yes. yes. And in fact, that um, that saves you the shipping, which is really the, the major cost uh, that Mary has in in doing the mail order scones right. business is the shipping, unfortunately. Right, yeah. so Priority you, mail is not cheap. No. So if you are in New York and you can pick up the scones, you can still place the order and there's a, there's a button there that says pick up. Um, and that is totally uh, yep. fine to do. Or of course... Uh, lots of you have Mary's phone number. You can yeah, just, you call, just her, call her, and I'm sure she will take care of you. Uh, okay, so halftime. If you're new here at the halftime, we have a poem written by Miriam Buell, who is our in-person um, session, what do we call her? Maestra, maybe. Ah, yeah. Manager, leader, not sure. Um, she, uh, I founded the session, but Mimi, for the last many years, has run the in-person session because I've been 
off doing other things. And i um, very great, grateful to her and also to Bob Armistead for um, all their organizational work, including during virtual times when Mimi has um, sent a poem in every single session. Yeah. So this is the 36th poem, and there will be 40 of them before we go on the hiatus. Uh, so let's see what, this what is 30, Mimi has. 37, right? 37, 38, oh, this yeah, is 37. 37. This is 37, yes. 37 okay, so let's hear the 37 poem. Go. Hi, Mary O's friends. A terrible poem in honor of siblings taken by my brother-in-law, Tom, behind the camera, behind the phone, and um, the Valilies. Hello, session friends. We are deep in July, and that means tonight, if you're a Valilie guy, you're leading our gang hither and yon with tunes as tasty as maple pecan. And Caitlin and Chris, you do us great honor. Quite frankly, without you, we'd probably be goners. These last several months, you drove the big bus. Colorful as Keezy's, our family, that's us. Here's to siblings, both real and invented. They keep us protected, make us demented. Brothers and sisters in the family human, like Jerry, Elaine, Kramer, George, and Newman. Please chip into the box if you can to help us uh, keep this going. And order scones from Mary. Thanks so much for everything, and stay safe. Eat your kibble. Bye. <laughs> mm, Amos. Amos. Oh, they both look very relaxed, yes. actually. Um, I think Mimi is still upstate visiting her a sibling, actually. Right. I believe she has three, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, and Amos has a new sibling um, who we're going to show a picture of later. Carson, yes. who, we, right. who we have seen in the videos in the past. Um, what a nice backdrop to the flowers. Um, okay, so uh, as Mimi said, please contribute to the virtual contribution box if you can. Um, we do have this session plus three more that we're planning. Um, the next one is Alistair White and Darren Kelly, and then we are currently putting together the all-star lineup for the final two. Um, and it's going to be good. And we do, of course, pay all of our leaders, special guests, all of that using contributions from you guys. Um, and we hope to keep this going strong right up until the end. If you if you didn't hear the spiel at the beginning of the session, we're going on hiatus after the 40th session, which will be on uh, Monday, August 10th. It's coming up. Um, we may or may not be back. We're not sure. It's very likely that we will be doing sessions every once in a while as we have internet. That's actually right. the main problem yes. in Alaska is the high speed internet. We had to yeah. like get my sister to upgrade her internet in order to even be doing this right now. Yes. So we will probably keep going in some form, but the twice a week yeah. will stop for now, at least on August 10th. But there'll definitely be more content coming your we, way. We have know. lots of stuff yeah. planned, um, but uh, the, yeah, the twice a week sessions are, are going to stop for at least now. Mm -hmm. But please help us keep going until then. Um, the link is, is it above your head? It yes. It is above my head. Um, and I'll put it in the comments as well. Uh, and then update, if you have a weekly membership, don't worry, we will be getting in touch with you shortly to let you know how to stop that. You can feel free to stop it on your own if you want to do that now. We hope that you'll keep it going through the end, but it's totally up to you. And um, we'll send an email to everybody who has uh, a weekly membership soon. Don't worry. Okay. I think we should have more more Alaskan tunes from Sky. Very Colin. good. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four.
Yes, there was a plane. If you were listening intently, you might have heard it. Yeah, and um, I grew up around planes. My family is in aviation, or was, is, I guess, still. Yeah. My my sister and uh, brother-in-law still fly planes. Um, and so whenever I hear that sound, I always just assume it's in the in the sky here. If I'm in Alaska, I assume it's a small plane. Um, but yes, that was on the on the video from from Sky and Colin. I was also on the note uh, on uh, talking about technology here. I was um, noticing we have a different setup with our camera today oh, yeah. than normal, and um, the place where we can see our, ourselves is to the right of the lens. And right. I just noticed that it looks really funny yeah, when I'm looking weird. at the screen. So yeah. I'm doing it right now, and here I am looking at the lens. That looks way better. So strange how our eyes can pick up on the tiniest little difference yeah, of right. where the pupil right. uh, is looking at screen. Also, there's another screen down here, so sometimes I'll be looking down here. The things you didn't know that you needed yes. to know during a pandemic, right. where your eyeballs should be looking at the screen. It's it's pretty wild. Uh, okay, so we didn't have a... I'm going to try to look at the, the mm -hmm. correct place here yeah. so it doesn't look like... This is not this awkward is, at all. No. 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 <laughs> uh, we didn't have a report from the field, and I was actually intending to go out and, and do a report from the muskox field. Oh. That would have been good. Yeah, but we ran out of time. The good news is we have more sessions to go visit the muskox yes. on. Maybe I can find an insider connection to go visit mm. them in, in backstage at the muskox farm. But um, I just, uh, to get us started on the Alaska reports from the field, I went over to my mom's house and did a little report from her garden because you may have followed our uh, exploits with gardening over the last few months, which, of course, went really badly. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we went to see my mom's garden, which is doing much better, and that is our report from the field for today. So enjoy. Okay, so here we are at my mom's house. That's a raven you can hear in the background. There's lots of ravens that live in this area, and they um, say all sorts of cool things. That's the classic raven sound that you hear right there. And um, you can see that my mom is much better at gardening than I am. She has um, some strawberries here. And um, tomato, oh, that's a potato right there with the purple flowers. Some herbs here. Um, tiny peppers, actually growing peppers. Tomatoes, we have some zucchinis and uh, more tomatoes here. And then this is the really cool thing. Uh, tomatillos in these cool lantern sorts of um, packages here. Um, so, uh, you can see that gardening is in the family, it just is not, uh, in my garden. Maybe if I had an outside it would be, but, uh, there you go. That's the report from the field. Actually, there's a field right here, I'll show you. And, um, we'll have more exciting stuff next time. Lovely! <laughs>
Thank you. That was a lovely report. Oh, thank you. I'm looking forward to doing some more exciting reports. Yeah. I mean, plants are very exciting, and I know that we have some plant fans in addition to me being a plant fan, but um, that's just to get us started off there. You know, it's been a very uh, um, rainy summer in Alaska. I, right. We just got here, and it's been raining most of the days. Um, but I think that the vegetables are reacting differently than they normally do. Mm -hmm here. Usually um, there's some humongous vegetables that have grown by this time. Uh, it's about time for when the state fairs should be happening. They're not happening this year, unfortunately, right. but you can usually go there and find like giant pumpkins, giant zucchinis, giant cucumbers. It's pretty cool. Um, we did see some sizable zucchinis at the farmer's market, although I guess the, the record-breaking ones are even larger. Yeah, yeah, the zucchinis get immense here. Yeah. I, it's it's absolutely amazing. One of the reasons is because, of course, it's light all night here. Right. Um, uh, I, we're past the solstice now, so it's getting like a little dusky, but um, that's one of the reasons the vegetables can grow so big. It's pretty cool. Um, okay, we have a really excellent thing coming up next. Um, we've done this two times before. We've um, solicited contributions from the original Mario's community um, of videos. Musical contributions. We, I guess we have solicited we all solicited sorts a lot of, of contributions, contributions of various sorts. But clear. These are musical contributions. The musical contributions. Thank you for clarifying. Yes. Yeah. Um, so uh, what we do is we ask the guest leader to record a set, and then we have um, the Mario's folks play along, and we put them all on screen. We've done this two times before. We've got one tonight, and then just today we decided that we'll do one more for the 40th session. And I'm going to talk about that in a second because we want to open that up to the whole session community. But for right now, we're going to go ahead with what we've been calling the Moo series, Moo. Mary O's On Screen. This is Moo number three, and Killian was kind enough to lead the session. And then a couple other leaders wanted to jump on as well, yep. just for good measure. We have Colin, uh, sorry, Connor Hearn playing um, guitar, backing John Redmond, of course, was like, I want to, yep. I want to play. And uh, James Cleveland. So yeah. we've got four leaders plus, I think, 15 uh, Mario's players from back in the day we, when we could play together. Um, it's exciting to put everybody on screen. So here yep. we go. There should be some common tunes that you can play along with. Too. Yes. yes. Enjoy. <laughs>
great to see everybody. Yes, yeah, so good cool. to see everybody. Um, and there are um, two or were two people playing there who are um, young folks, too young to be in the bar, actually. Yes. Um, although that hasn't stopped them. That hasn't stopped them as it didn't stop me either when I was younger. Um, I'm 22 now, so yeah. I'm like mm-hmm. it was only yeah. a few years ago. Um, anyways, Mia and Josh joined us there. And um, as somebody who got into this music when I was really, really young, it is great to see young people um, joining in and also important, I think, for the transmission of the music and the culture. Um, Mia, actually, it's really interesting. She stopped me as I was leaving the stage door from um, the Broadway show we play in, uh, maybe, I don't know how long ago now, a year or two ago. Yep. And she said hello, and we struck up a friendship. And now she is becoming a great Irish fiddle player herself. Um, studies a lot on her own, learns from recordings just like I did growing up, and she um, comes to the session. I don't know if she's here tonight, but she's come to the Mario's in yep. person, and um, she and, and Josh, another student of mine, were in the video there. So it's really cool to see that. Okay, so here's the cool thing. We're going to do one more of these. These require a ton of work on Chris's part, so thank you to Chris sure. for putting this together. We're going to do one more, and we have been doing 16 frames, as you saw there, we will maybe put more on depending on who wants to do it. So here's the deal. If you want to do the last set, I did send an email out to the session um, uh, newsletter group mm-hmm. this morning, but uh, if you didn't get it, um, you can head to the Mario's soundboard, which is uh, tune.supply slash sounds. There's a link there right at the top to fill out a form um, that will tell us that you want to be in the, in the moo number four, which will be the last one for now. And it will air on August 10th. We can potentially put as many people up. I mean, I'm, I don't want to speak for you. I guess we can't put like, what's the limit? I don't know. We'll see. Sure. Let's see how many yeah, people see. want to do it. I, um, there are, the, the tunes have been selected and they are, um, some of the tunes that we play at the real Mary O's as the final set. And that's the reason I selected them. For some reason, these tunes have become like the final set tunes. Um, a show can farewell, which I know is not Irish. It just became the, the ending the ending tune. A show can farewell, uh, Rolling Waves, Feral O'Gara, and Silver Spire. It's going to be a big epic set to end off the last session there. And we'll play them at a reasonable speed, reasonable speed of course. So if you know those tunes and you want to be involved in this last um, moo number four, uh, go sign up on that website. I also put the link at the very bottom of the description of this video, if you click description, go down, it says secret link. <laughs> it's a secret. It's, it's, a nickname, it's secret. an Easter egg. Wow. Um, so just go down there, click the last thing at the bottom of the description, secret link, and that will also take you to the form that will allow you to sign up. If you have any questions about any of this, write them in the comments and I can comment during the, I can reply during the next um, segment here or send us an email at tunes at tune.supply and and we can help you. We're hoping that um, all of the new friends, in addition to the old friends, can can participate in this um, in this uh, moo number four. Okay, and we have some community pictures. We broke broke this into two segments, so we we, we so it's not too long. We have, I think we have six or seven right now. Um, and let's see if I can remember what is going on here. So this is. Angel Botzer. Yeah. Angel Botzer said that she is an only child, but there were two fawns, siblings, in her yard. Very cute. So she sent us a picture Very of that. Very nice. Uh, okay. Uh, Bob Beamer, Beamer sent us a few pictures, and I was supposed to print off the notes about these, and I didn't. I just realized, like, oh, just no. at this moment. So Bob is in the comments, and he is going to have to help me out here. But these are some sibling concertinas. You can mm-hmm. see there's the little sibling and the big sl- right. sibling. That little one is my favorite. Um, and this is the uh, front of a tune book that he has, and you'll notice that the music trans- transcript, sorry, the music transcriptions are done by um, the Valley brothers' mother. And I forgot to say, when we did Moon Number 3, that last tune is called Donegal Lasses. Right. Uh, sorry, Donegal Lass, and that was written about their mom. Yeah, she is the Donegal she Lass. She is the Donegal Lass. And uh, Bob said he didn't realize all of these connections until well after he got this book, which is cool. And, uh, oh my gosh, Bob, I can't remember what you told me about this. You're going to have to put it in the notes there. Um, but some of you may recognize this uh as Bob's Facebook profile picture yes. for Betty Wheatstone. 
Um, so Bob, help me out here. Put the notes in the comments. I'm sorry I didn't. One thing is we don't have access to a printer, and That's so I can't true. print out my notes. Right, we're gonna have to. Uh, fix I'm so that. sorry. Okay, we'll continue on. Bob, tell us tell us what we're seeing there. Okay, do you want to do a few? Let's see. This is James Cleveland sent this in um, with his brother, his brother Carl, when they were little, and yeah. then he sent a matching picture in when they were bigger. Scuba diving. Yes, Very so that's nice. James and his brother. James is a um, uh, a scuba diver. Um, he sent us some pictures before, right? Right. Yeah. And let's see. This is Jill Joan Yeager. Yep. Old Castle, Ireland. Very cool. Mm -hmm. And let's get one more up here. Oh, this one is not a siblings photo, but we can put it on anyway. This came during the broadcast. Um, so this is Chip, the dinosaur, who is um girl or boyfriend with avocado i'm not sure they're they're in love and chip um chip's parents got some scones and chip wants to eat them we were told but is is uh, not allowed to oh, i see um so that's what the scones look like if you Beautiful. order some pretty cool okay i feel really bad that i didn't write bob's notes down so he's probably put them in he the said betty auckland holding one of the identical triplet siblings with the other two on the table i own all but the largest of the three all right I'm surprised that he doesn't own the largest one because yeah. he has a pretty big one. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Um, great. So we'll have some more community pictures in a second and I will review my notes. Great. I feel really bad. I feel really bad. I need to, I need to have a secretary for the community yeah. pictures, I think. In the meantime, while I'm doing that, we're going to have some more tunes from uh, the brothers. All right. Here we go. Hello, everyone. Um, very happy to be playing these uh Few tunes for you here with you here tonight, hopefully, um, for the Mario's uh, session. Great to be playing a few tunes with uh, uh, Killian and and Keeving, even if we're not actually in the same place at the same time. But uh, we'll have to make do with this uh, for the moment. Uh, we're going to start with a few jigs, um, a few of my favourite tunes. Uh, Willie Coldman's jig, Schlieve Russell, and uh, the Connock Man's Rambles.
Excellent. Great. So, so nice to hear piano. Yeah. I like piano in Irish music. Me too. Um, which is good since you play the piano. Yeah, it's helpful. Yeah. <laughs> but that's very cool to hear uh, Cleveland. He was also on, which concert was it that he joined mm. with Nuva? It was on a Bloomsday. Oh, no, was, yes, Bloomsday. Bloomsday and thing. he was on one of our sessions as well. One of the Ireland sessions. I think. No? Maybe not. I don't remember. There's been so much. Yeah. It's hard to remember. You're right, though. He was on the Bloomsday. I thought, was, I thought it was Bloomsday, yeah. Yes, which probably can still be watched oh, at yeah. the Symphony Space, Symphony Space YouTube. I don't know that for sure, but um, he did a set with Nula for uh, Bloomsday, which was in June, early yeah. June, I think. I've never met him. I hope yeah. someday we, we can meet in person. Uh, okay, a couple of Tunes of Play updates here. Um, just, I'm, I'm saying this a few times during the session in case we have people coming in and out. This is the 37th session. We're going to go up to the 40th session and then take a, we're calling it hi a hiatus. We don't want to call it the end because we don't know if it's the end yet, but we all will be taking some sort of break from the twice a week session. Um, uh, but there's some exciting tunes supply news. Yes. I mean, I don't know how exciting it is. I think we it's are exciting. very excited about this. We're, news. Yeah. Do you, what news are you talking about? The merchandise? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So this is very exciting. We received some Toon Supply merchandise. People have been asking us when we are going to make some, and we just have been a little too busy, but we finally did two little things here. We have coasters and stickers. Here's what they look like. The sticker is a three inch vinyl sticker. I feel like Vanna White now. Yeah. Um, with a little, uh, we're calling it a badge. It's like a little logo that was designed by Anna Colleton. Here, I'll show oh. you the, the picture because it's hard to see with the lighting. Um, okay, so I forgot here, we had an actual picture. We have the actual, like an easy to see picture. Uh, so that's the coaster right mm -hmm. there. And we also have the sticker, which looks exactly the same, but I wanted to put two pictures on because it's so cool. I can't even tell them apart. <laughs> Um, so those are available now on the Tune Supply store, which is store.tunes.supply. I think Chris is, yeah, he's got it up there on the, um, on the screen. You cannot click on that. You've got to type it in. Um, but it's, they're right up at the top. And just because they're so small, they come in four at a time, just so that the shipping makes sense. Um, and otherwise we... it's probably like three dollars to ship a yeah. five second sticker yeah. yeah it's it's ridiculous but they will be shipped from alaska so you'll yeah, get an alaska cool. postmark right. um which is very valuable of course yeah and we'd love to send some of those to you um so you can put your session beverages on your coaster and put your stickers on your case or wherever else you want to put them on yeah. your face your child your cat yeah it's all good so and we have t-shirts coming anna is doing the design on all of this for us and she's um, fantastic she's she designed great. our logo which is up here. I was like, what are you pointing at? Over. There's nothing over there. <laughs> and I designed this lovely um, Tune Supply logo. Yes, with the hummingbird and the yeah. and the grandma flower, as we're calling it. Yeah. Uh, okay, so what else? Um, sessions, yeah. I already said we have three more after this. And then um, Tune Supply is not going away. We are just kind of reconfiguring some things. Yeah, it is certainly not a Tune Supply hiatus. No, nope, not a Tune Supply hiatus. virtual session hiatus. Yes. And um, don't forget to sign up for the mailing list so we can keep you updated on whatever it is that is coming next. Okay, so we have one more set of tunes from Sky and Colin who recorded from Anchorage. Mm -hmm. And this one is uh, has a, a little Easter egg at the end, which I'll tell you about so you just aren't, you don't think that YouTube is freaking out yeah. or something. Um, Sky said that his, his camera stopped abruptly about 10 seconds before the end of the set and the set was so good they didn't want to redo it. So, yeah. um, it, it went to black at the end. Well, we have filled in that black. I was I was given permission by Sky to do this. He said, have fun with it. So we put a couple pictures um, up at the end there of some Anchorage sessions that happen at McGinley's Pub during non-coronavirus times. Mm -hmm. um, if you're from Anchorage, you might see some friends there. And then one picture of Sky that I stole from his Facebook of him in a ski race because I'm kind of obsessed with the fact, uh, with the fact that Sky is an incredible ski racer. Yep. And he's probably not going to like that I did that, but I did it. Well, so here we go. permission, sort of. <laughs> I sort of had permission. Okay. One more set from Sky and Colin. One, two,
earplug in my ear. <laughs> right. Pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, the bugs are the bugs are bad up here. Uh, yes. You heard at the end. Yes, and yeah. I, <laughs> I meant to say, I was I was watching myself in the camera. Okay, this is another thing about coronavirus. We've all realized like you can't not watch yourself in the camera. Right. It makes me feel really egotistical. Right. Um, but so it's something about our human brains. Anyways, I was seeing myself scratching earlier during so many bug bites. <laughs> so many bugs. Yeah. That is a bad thing. Um, Alaskans like to say that the mosquito is the state uh, bird. Right. That's a, a right. little inside joke there. Um, okay, and a couple things there. Well, first of all, thank you to to Sky and Colin. Yes. That was amazing. That was Sky's second instrument of the night, but he does play a lot of other ones as well. He's already he's already played um, Bowron and Bazuki on the session. Right. And and fiddle you saw. Yeah, as and well. banjo. And banjo. Yeah, I think he plays guitar. Probably. He's amazing. I don't think he's in the comments. And somebody was asking what the names of those tunes were, and I actually can't recall them off the top of my head. Yeah. And he didn't announce them, so we didn't put the names up. Well, we don't know. he's oh, he's a short seven-hour drive away, yeah. so we could probably just go ask him tomorrow. Maybe right. we'll, we'll see. We, we do plan to pass through Anchors, so yeah. for the Anchors folks who are watching, we look forward to seeing you soon in person, hopefully. Um, and then uh, regarding these, I was going to say something, and now I forgot what it was. I don't know. Stickers are hard to unstick. Oh, that, okay. They're vinyl which is really cool because you can actually stick them to a water bottle oh, yeah. and wash them in the dishwasher right. and they won't come off. And the other thing I just want to make sure in case you go over to the um, store and are wondering about the price, the price is $8 for four of them. We're not selling them individually because the shipping just does not really make sense. So eight for four and that includes the shipping. Right. So uh, if to anywhere in the, in the U.S. So you could buy a pack and send them to your friends. And I was just thinking I should probably put a combination pack up, which I didn't. Yeah. I'll do that soon. Uh, okay, we have a few more community pictures um, before the uh, last set from the brothers. Um, you are closer to the words, so maybe this you says, should read. Laura Johnson, Goofy Bob, and Lori. <laughs> That's, That's cute. Accurate. Yeah, very cute. cute. <laughs> and let's see. Also from Laura Johnson, some orphan kittens. Aww. So that's very cute. Uh, oh, this oh. is Rogan. <laughs> Great. This is Rogan and Must her twin Rogan sister, and Maggie. Right? Yes, who yeah. we have met. I think Maggie's getting married soon, actually. Yes. Very cute. Peter and Miriam Kaysen. Yes, and this was, I believe, from uh, 1959, 60, I think. Oh, this six, is 65. 65, yeah. maybe, yeah. And um, this is, uh, Peter is Chip, the dinosaur's dad. Right. Just to make sure everybody understands the familial right. connections here. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Sally, Fran, Bernadette, Kathleen, Brennan. Yes, and Sally was in The Moo, number three, oh, yeah, a right, moment ago, course, playing yeah. some tunes. Yeah. Let's see. I don't know these people. Tim, Sharon. Oh, this is, um, okay. This is uh, t Tim Satry, who sent oh, in all yeah. the amazing uh, footage of the bears and the deer that got rescued and right, all of that right, sort right. of stuff. This is from um, before Alaska was a state, which actually was not oh, yeah. that long not ago that long in ago. the whole scheme of things. My right. dad was born here. Um, before Alaska was a state, right. which is crazy. And this is uh, them on the 4th of July. Cool. With, yeah. And this one is probably my favorite. Oh. That's Amos and Carson. Yes. And you might recognize those docs from the poem. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how Amos is going to leave Carson no. to go back to the city. It's not going to be a gonna problem. Be <laughs> um, okay, so that's all the community pictures for today. And um, before we have our last set, I just want to remind everyone one more time, please sign... Here I go, scratching my mosquito yeah. bites again. Please sign up for the mailing list. And uh, the reason for this is that's the way that we're going to communicate with you as to what's going on. Our next month is uncertain, where we're going to be, what we're going to be doing, uh, what we're going to be presenting on Tune Supply. And so the best way for us to get a hold of you is through the mailing list. We promise not to bombard you with emails. But um, the links to sign up are down in the description. Uh, just scroll down. There's there's mailing lists. You can also subscribe on YouTube. Be our friend on Facebook. We post stuff there. Um, we have an Instagram. Yeah. Which is... We don't know how to use it, but we, we don't have really, it. Yeah. It's not really necessary to be our Instagram friend, but right. you can if you want to. Um, and yeah, that's it for keeping in touch. That will help us to be in touch with you as things happen. Uh, okay, I think we've got one more set from the brothers. We do. Okay, here we go. 
Okay, we're going to go on with a couple of reels this time. Uh, the first one of these is a tune composed by the great temporary fiddle player Sean Ryan. It's called The Reel of Rio. And the second one is another old favourite called The Sligo Maid. <laughs> I could listen to that all day, yeah. all night. Um, well, thankfully, there are many recordings of those guys. Yes. Um, I was not meaning for that transition, but it is true. Yeah. They have uh, recorded a lot of amazing stuff. Of course, Killian is with Lunasa, who you may have heard of, mm -hmm. maybe, um, along with Kevin Crawford, who has been on, on the virtual session a couple of times and uh, leads us in real life as well, which is just a treat. It's really a treat. Um, I was just eating a carrot during this break, so I'd, I might have carrot pieces. Mm. No, I don't no? think so. Okay, good. Um, okay, so just a few things to end off, and then we'll play our final set with you all. Um, first thing is the next session, we do have the leader set for that already, mm -hmm. and that will be Alistair White. Um, and he wanted me to say that he's going to be playing Irish tunes, not Scottish tunes. Yep. Um, so it'll be a kind of a normal Mario session. So you might uh, remember his last couple sessions that he curated were, um, 
Scottish. Scottish, yeah. Yes. Featuring great players. Yes. Incredible. So um, Alistair is going to be joined by Darren Kelly, mm -hmm. um, our good friend from Philadelphia on guitar. And the guest for that one is Aiden Connolly. Now, uh, Aiden got in touch with Tune Supply through email. And when I received the email, I thought, oh, Aiden, the, the president of the Irish Arts Center is emailing us. Right. Um, because that Aiden has the same name. But this is not Aiden Connolly from the Irish Arts Center. It is uh, an amazing young fiddle player who was recommended to us by, was it Anne Marie? I don't know. One of the actually. session folks. Yeah. I can't remember. Anyways, um, of course, he's amazing, and he's going to be the guest mm -hmm. on session. He is also a tunes play artist, and I, and of course, I just wanted to mention, if you, when you go over to look at the stickers and the coasters, the other thing you can purchase on the Tune Supply store is um, custom performances and lessons and learning recordings and all sorts of other things from the Tune Supply artists. There's about 60 Tune Supply artists, and when you purchase one of the things over there that start at 30 bucks, which is a bargain for having one of these folks make you a personalized video, um, that money goes to them, and um, it's a great way to support the community, especially as the sessions. Uh, and after the 40th one, you can still hear from the artists who have been on the session and a lot of other folks as well through the Tune Supply store. So just keep that in mind. Um, oh, the theme for the next one. Okay, I love the oh, yeah, theme for the next one. one. Because I'm a dork. I don't know if you guys are going to like it. But uh, the theme is favorite words. It's so great. It's There's great. so many good words yeah. in the English language. And we don't use many of them actually yes. i feel like i just use the same words all all the time so yeah. favorite words think of one or two or three that you like um i don't know how you're going to send these to us you could send an email you could send a picture you could send a recording of you saying the word i don't know so go crazy be creative with this one um and i think alistair actually uh, yes he has embraced the theme he has embraced the yeah. theme and i am too because i'm a wordaholic if that's a word i don't know sure um my mom already has one. Great. Actually, her word is she. It's called what was it? Fairy locks. Oh yeah, something like that. It was a Middle English word for people with crazy hair, and she used it to refer to my hair, <laughs> which is accurate. Um, and I did cut my hair. Some people. Yes, Caitlin got a haircut. Doesn't it look fantastic? I got a haircut because I was just the coronavirus hair had gotten too long, and it, I needed a, a chop. Yeah. Uh, as you as you did too. I did but too. You just can't tell. Mine as, was as much. less drastic. <laughs> yes, that's true um okay so those are our next leaders uh and then we have two more sessions after Alistair's and we're finalizing the lineup right now it'll be some Mario's favorites uh and just keep an eye on the website and the Facebook page and if you're on the mailing list we'll send that out as well yeah. don't forget to sign up for the Moo number four if you want to be part of the on-screen uh extravaganza that's going to happen on the last session uh in case you missed that scroll down to the bottom of the description of this video and there's a thing that says secret link <laughs> The it's secret, not very secret. It's not a secret, but only only you guys know that it's there, and that's how you can sign up to be part of the on screen that's going to happen on August tenth. Uh, and throw a few bucks in the contribution jar if you can. That will keep us going right up to, until the end. We pay our leaders a normal New York City gig wage, which which is hard to come by these days yep. for musicians and and artists. Uh, so thank you for your contributions. And I think we're going to play a set. Great. So this starts out with a tune that is, um, I've never heard it played at the Irish sessions in New York, but I learned it growing up here in Alaska. I wanted to play a, a, a tune that I learned here. It's called Flatbush Waltz. It has a, a klezmer sort of sound to it. I think it would be classified as mm -hmm. a klezmer tune. But I learned it in the uh, contradance scene here. And um, it was written by Andy Statman. When I was growing up and I heard people say, oh, we're going to play the Flatbush, the Flatbush Waltz, I thought they were referring to a specific bush that the composer had seen in his yard mm -hmm. because that was my only point of reference for the word Flatbush. It was not until I moved to New York that I realized that there is a whole neighborhood <laughs> yes. called Flatbush, and that is what it refers to. Yes, as not... well as a major artery through Brooklyn. Yes. Well, when you grow up in Fairbanks, you don't know these things. Yeah. You just think, oh, bushes, yes, they are right. outside. So... Um, I, I hope a few of you know this one. I We have been experiencing what we we call blarg lately. Mm -hmm. Blarg is a sensation that one might feel during coronavirus times because you are uh, scared and worried and um, frustrated, disappointed with the state of the world, and it gets you down. And we've been having serious blarg. Major. And so uh, yesterday when I was choosing the tunes, I thought, you know, 
I've been having some blarg, so I want to play a tune that has a bit of a, a sad, melancholy feel to it, which is why I chose Flatbow Schwaltz. And then we will go into a tune that is not very blargy, but has a great name for COVID times, which is Splendid Isolation. Now, I know that all the Irish musicians have been playing Splendid Isolation yes. because it's so relevant. Um, it's been a favorite of mine, and it's on both of my CDs, actually, because I just love it. It's a good tune for both Alaska, where there's just isolation all the time, and New York, of course. So we'll do that. And my students are learning that soon in class. Yeah. And then we'll end off with a nice, happy tune, Patty Fahey's. Uh, the G major real, um, which my advanced class, sorry, my level four class just learned on yesterday, mm -hmm. on yesterday, <laughs> on yesterday. <laughs> so we hope you can play along with these. We won't go too fast on those reels. And uh, then we'll say goodbye after that. Okay, and I'm gonna put the chords up for Chris because he was so kind as to learn this 15 minutes beforehand, Great. as he often does. Okay. Flatbush Waltz. A one, two,
the blog away. Patty Fahis, it always does. I feel much better. Um, okay, uh, I forgot to say something actually about the moo, the moo number three. No three. Actually, all of the moos have been uh, made possible by Josh. Uh, yes, that's right. Mimi's dog Josh is the one who is responsible for the moos happening. Um, so thank you, Josh, and Mimi, of course. Mm -hmm. But um, we, we remember Josh fondly. Um, yes. Uh, okay, and there was something else I was supposed to say. It's amazing how my brain yeah, just evaporates thoughts these days. Um, I can't remember. So I think that Chris should do the thank yous. Yeah, well, to wrap up, I think this is the longest ever Mario's virtual session. We're nearly to two hours here. Whoa. Yeah. Um, yes, and as Bob says, we're going to have to talk to our union stewards yeah. if we go over two <laughs> right. hours. Yeah. So we have three minutes to So we got to shut it shop. down here. Um, <laughs> Wow, that was really cool. Special thanks to um, all three of the Valley brothers. Uh, that's Killian, Niall, and Kivin. Um, it's really an honor to have you guys on, so yes. thank you. And um, also, it was cool to have Sky and Colin, mm -hmm. Colin in from Anchorage. Um, from not too far away now. Yeah. Seems strange to say that. So actually, maybe we could get a tune with them in person That sometime. would be great. Yeah. There's a lot of great uh, musicians in Anchorage. And actually, uh, there's, a, there's a festival coming up called Galway Days that... Um, Actually, my band with Isaac, it's not my band. It was uh, Isaac Alderson, me, Dan Lowry, Dan Sheffield, who nobody knows about now in the scene, but is an incredible accordion player, now a, uh, a Princeton scholar, oh. not in music, uh, Sarah Wilfong. Did I get everybody? In Surreal, the band know. Surreal. We actually were the uh, first artists to do Dublin Days on D Street back in 2000, and that turned into the Galway Days on G Street Festival in Anchorage, which now is still going and is going to be online coming up in the next month, I think. Mm -hmm. So if you um, if you are interested, keep an eye on that. It's run by the Irish Club of Anchorage. I think it's called Irish Club of Alaska. Um, and they're going to have some amazing artists. Um, okay, I think that's it. Just That's it. Order your stickers and coasters. Yes, and scones. There's scones, so many things that you scones. can order now. You could throw $2 in the bucket. Actually, yes. I think the minimum is 3 So there you is could throw $3 in the bucket. Strangely, there is yeah, a minimum. Yeah, weird. Sorry We did not that. set that yeah. minimum, just so you know. It's $3 yeah. for whatever reason. Um, yes, thanks yeah. for keeping us going right up until the end here. Not the end. The, the hiatus. hiatus. Okay, going we'll up see through you the soon course. for three more uh, sessions. Yeah, Alistair and Darren on, uh, what's today, Thursday? Thursday. On Monday, yeah. well, we'll see you for that. Have a great weekend, stay safe, uh, keep the blarg at bay if you yep. can. We will try to do the same. Goodbye. Bye.